Hello, my name is Rian Blom with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering team. This video is about installing Avaya Aura Application Enablement Services 7.0 on Avaya Appliance Virtualization Platform. Let's take a quick look at where we are in the deployment steps for getting Application Enablement Services, or AES, installed on the Avaya Appliance Virtualization Platform, also known as AVP. Looking at this image, what you should have done already is installed AVP. You should also have deployed Utility Services Server on AVP. You may or may not have installed a WebLM, but whether or not you do that depends on the environment that you're installing the AES in. So we are deploying the AES virtual machine onto this pre-installed environment and there are two methods that you can use to do this. The first is that you can use the Solution Deployment Manager from System Manager 7 to deploy the AES. There's potentially some advantages to using the SDM in System Manager, but discussing that in great detail is beyond the scope of this presentation. The second method you can use is to deploy the AES through a standalone Solution Deployment Manager, or SDM, installed on a Windows client PC. This is the method I'm going to be using today. It is also worth mentioning that I have already pre-downloaded the AES OVA file from Avaya PLDS. So the OVA is on the Windows client PC where I am running the SDM from. Let's look at how to get the AES deployed. Open SDM and from the SDM client dashboard browse to VM management. As you can see I've already added a site called HR CTI lab. I've also added the server with appliance virtualization platform installed and this AVP server currently has one virtual machine installed which is utility services. Under the VM management tree select the AVP server where AES is going to be installed. Then on the virtual machines tab click on new. The VM deployment worksheet will pop up. Enter a name for the AES virtual machine. Note that this will not be the host name, just a name that the AES will be known as within SDM. Next, select the data store, then scroll down to the deploy OVA section and choose which deployment method you would like to use. Since I pre-downloaded the AES OVA to this client's PC already, I am going to leave the selection on provide OVA path. Enter the full path to where the file is saved or like in my case, copy and paste the location from the properties of the file. Next, click on Submit File. Once the OVA has been read, select the profile you would like to deploy. This is similar to what was previously known as the footprint you want to deploy. This determines the physical attributes of the AES virtual machine, such as how much memory and CPU it will have. Scroll down and populate all the required parameters in the configuration parameter section. Notice that after completing the configuration parameter section that the deploy button is not active yet. This means that there are required parameters which have not been completed yet. You also need to go to the network parameter section and choose the NIC that should be used for the private LAN. Whether or not you have populated parameters for the private NIC, you'll have to complete this step. Now you should see that the deploy button should be active. Click on deploy and then on the End User License Agreement Acceptance page, click on Accept. Once the deployment starts, click on the Virtual Machines tab again. You should see that the current action status should be deploying. From here, click on Status Details. The STM VM Deployment Status page will come up 
and for the most part will provide you with very basic progress status. If you are interested in seeing more on the progress of the deployment, then you can connect to the AVP with VMware vSphere Client. The AVP root user password is the one set during installation in the kickstart file. You will be able to see when the virtual machine is created and also monitor additional recent tasks that was executed by SDM. You also get a better indication of the OVF deployment status. So you can confirm where the deployment started and what percentage of the deployment have been completed. Deployment times will vary depending on the method you are using to deploy the OVA. In this example, deploying from a pre-downloaded OVA, the AES deployment took roughly 25 minutes. When VMware deployment status reaches the sanity test section, you should be able to open the console on the virtual machine and then track progress further. As you can see here, we are waiting for AE services to start up. Once all the action items have been successfully completed on the VMware deployment status window, you can close it down. You should now see in the SDM that the current action status changed to VM deploy completed. You can slide the columns left or right to get more information on specific sections like the VM app version and the VM app name. Now that the deployment is completed, your newly deployed AES should be available and ready for use. You can verify this by going to the AES management console and accessing the AES server for the first time. Your next step would be to start configuring the AES if this is a new implementation or to restore a backup from an older system if this is an upgrade. That concludes this presentation on installing application and admin services on a via appliance virtualization platform. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions and feedback at mentor.avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.